Hi, I'm Fraser Douglas, the avid tent camper. Although today I'm not sure I'm very avid tent camper. Abe and I have just driven 11 hours from our home up to Douthat State Park in Virginia through heavy rain. When we arrived at the campground, the office was closed, so we found a campsite and we had to set up our camp in torrential downpours. And now that we've got set up, the park rangers just come by and told us that the stream is about to flood the only road into the campground and advised us if we wanted to get out before tomorrow, we've got to leave now. We're decide we've decided to stick it out. Now having said that, in this video, I want to talk about bedding and in particular covers that you might want to use in different types of weather. Hey Ava, what you doing? I'm working um, the bed for us. After mopping up about a half an inch of water on the floor of our tent, she lays down a piece of indoor-outdoor carpet that measures about six feet by eight feet. And then she places two more carpets up near the door. On top of the carpet, she places two non-slip yoga mats. These mats provide extra comfort and would provide minimal comfort should either of our air mattresses spring a leak. And then places two REI camp bed self-inflating insulated air mattresses on top of the yoga mats. She then uses a standard size fitted sheet to hold all of the mattresses together. Here is another view of our bed on a different trip. On cool nights we wear warm clothes to help hold in body heat. For many years I wore a fleece jacket and a knit stocking hat, but now I prefer to wear a polyester hoodie. I also wear a pair of polyester athletic pants and a pair of wool socks. After setting up our bed, we'll need some type of cover that will keep us comfortable regardless of the temperature. At night, I frequently fall asleep with no cover at all and then move cover over me as my body cools down. I usually need just a light cover, but since Ava prefers to wear lighter garments, she'll need a heavier cover. For several years, Ava and I used two mummy-style sleeping bags, but over time we realized that these bags had several problems. For example, they are expensive, costing over $100 each, and we never used many of their features. We never zip them up much, we never used the drawstrings, and we never used the hoods. More importantly, they did not allow us to touch each other, and Ava and I enjoy occasionally wrapping our legs together at night. So we began looking for alternate covers that could be used both in warm weather and in cool weather. We first decided to try blankets. We wanted a polyester or wool blanket rather than a cotton blanket because polyester and wool will keep us warm even if they get wet. The most economical choice is a standard U.S. Army wool blanket. This one measures six and a half feet by five feet and costs $20. Two of them would keep two people warm as long as the temperature stayed above 50 degrees. For just a couple more dollars, you could get a nicer Swiss Army blanket such as this one. It measures seven feet by four and three quarter feet and cost about $23. Pendleton blankets would be a much better choice. They're very thick and large, but they are also very expensive. For example, this queen-sized Yakima camp blanket measures about five and a half feet by six and a half feet and sells for two hundred dollars. Sometimes you can find it much less on eBay or outlet websites but it's still a little thin and too small to keep two people warm if the temperature drops down below 50 degrees. 
After trying wool blankets for a while, Abe and I decided to try a double-wide sleeping bag. Eventually, we settled on this Teton Sports Mammoth 20-degree bag. It measures 5 feet by 7.5 feet and is incredibly warm. We chose this particular bag because it was economically priced at $110. It was larger than most other double-wide bags that we could find for sale, and because it had synthetic filled insulation, which we think is much better for basic tent camping. During the hot summer months, we only need half of it to be used as a quilt on top of us. In cooler weather, we'll just zip the two halves together, but still use them as a quilt. Several other companies now make double-wide sleeping bags, but they are expensive. For example, this Marmot Maverick retails for about $200, but can be found on the internet for about $150. Ava and I really like our Teton Sports double-wide sleeping bag, but it does have two limitations that should be considered before purchasing one. At 15 pounds, it weighs much more than two rectangular-shaped sleeping bags, and this heavy weight means that it does not compress very well and requires considerable packing space. We use a medium-sized duffel bag. In addition, we wish it was a little wider than 5 feet so that we don't have to worry about our sides getting cold if the temperature drops below 50. Another option is to buy two rectangular sleeping bags that could be zipped together. In warmer weather, just carry one sleeping bag and open it up as a quilt. In cooler weather, zip the two together. This Kelty Callisto, rated down to 30 degrees, for example, only weighs about 4.5 pounds and costs about $60. Two of them would weigh less than 10 pounds and require relatively little packing space and would cost just over $100. When zipped together on one side, the two bags would create an extra large and warm quilt. Well, I hope this video helps you make some decisions about what type of bedding and covering is best for your particular needs. For more information about camp bedding, please visit my website www.basictentcamping.com and read my book titled Basic Tent Camping. Remember, take more trips, travel further, visit more attractions, and save money. Go tent camping.